what started out as a very contentious fight over an election would escalate into the killing of Judge Burnett over the upcoming trial of Jason Little for killing his wife to marry another woman. We will also talk about the battle for Jackson, Kentucky that took place over weeks in November and December of 1897 and the story of Kurt Jett Sr. and his son Hiram Jett trying to shoot Jeremiah Weldon Bad Jerry Little 27 times in the streets of Jackson, Kentucky. Come along with us as we talk about the Jet Little feud. All aboard the Kentucky Tennessee Living Time Machine. Please fasten your seat belts and keep your arms and legs inside of the vehicle at all times. But to get going, we need your help. We still need to fire up the time machine to transport us. Please help us by clicking on the like, subscribe, and bell notification buttons down below. Not only does this fire up the time machine, but it convinces YouTube that we need a bigger time machine to reach more people who love history as much as you do. Now, back to our story. What some historians say. First, we will look at the historians and what they are writing about this particular feud. In the book, Kentucky's Famous Feuds and Tragedies, quote, The Jet Little feud next stained the history of Breathitt County. It was brought to a close about 15 years ago, and after the principal participants therein had all been killed off. As bad as conditions had been prior to 1878, they grew decidedly worse in that year, when Judge William Randall, the presiding judge of the criminal court of the district, was compelled to desert the bench in the midst of a court session to seek safety in the flight. The county was in a state of revolution brought about by the assassination of Judge John Burnett, then county judge. This crime was laid at the door of the Gambles and Littles. The uprising of the factions was participated by Judge Randall's declaration that his court would see to it that the criminals were punished. Judge Randall never returned to Breathitt County during his term of office, unquote. In the blog, Bloody Breathitt, Kentucky, The Feuds and Wars, quote, the Jet Little feud was next to stain the history of Breathitt County. It was brought to a close about 15 years ago, after many members of each faction had been killed off. No punishment was ever meted out to the assassins who perpetrated these crimes, unquote. There was a lot more to this that we have found in these two sources. While neither is incorrect in their statements, there was a lot more drama to this. As Jackson, Kentucky itself would be taken over by one faction, and a huge shootout would ensue over the possession of the false session of the county court. The election that started a war. Now, any Eastern Kentucky person today can tell you that elections in the mountains can get pretty heated. While guns are not often drawn and threats of harming a person is not usually done today, the person can pick sides and become very angry when challenged on their viewpoint. However, back in the time of this feud, the factions did not have as much self-control as we shall soon find out. While this section of the feud is political in nature, it is in no way seen as a reflection of politics today. The following is a summary of the Little Falls transcript article. Last summer, there was a hotly contested race for the seat of county judge. Three men were in the race, ex-judge Edward Strong and ex-judge Butler for the Democratic ticket and J.M. Burnett for the Republican ticket, who was an attorney at law in Jackson. The Littles, Aikmans, Gambrels, and Allens all favored Edward Strong as their candidate. Bill Strong, Daniel, and William Freeman, and other persons favored Burnett as their candidate. Burnett won by eight votes. The Littles claimed that Burnett had not won the election legally and should not be seated. They also swore that they would kill him over the matter. Burnett did not fear these threats and swore that he would hold the court at the regular time. When the time came for the court to be held, Burnett summoned a number of resolute men and opened the court session. A few months before this, Jason Little of the Little faction had gotten drunk and shot his wife so that he could marry another woman. He was sent to Richmond Jail for safekeeping as the Little family had sworn to release him from jail in Breathitt County. 
Jason Little was to be tried in the fall term of the court. Judge Randall issued an order for a large guard to accompany Little back to the county for trial. Judge Burnett appeared in Jackson, opened the court for the fall session on Monday, November 25th at its usual hour. The Taking of Jackson, Kentucky The following is a summary of the Helena Weekly Herald's article as to what happened during those fateful days. The feud began because of a fight between William Strong and Jack Aikman. While this was not a feud in the strictest sense, we will discuss it as it was important to understanding what went on between the Jet and Little factions. On November 30th, 1878, the Littles and Captain Strong would be on a collision course concerning the county court and its trial of Jason Little. The Strong Party captured Jackson, Kentucky and began drinking after they stockpiled a log cabin with guns and ammo. That afternoon, the Eggman Party, which had 10 to 15 men, rode into town and attacked Strong's faction. A shootout ensued and it is reported that 30 to 40 shots rang out in the town. Daniel and William Freeman of the Eggman faction were shot, one through the body and the other through the head, and were removed from the scene that evening and taken to their homes. William died of his injuries, but Daniel recovered. The Strong faction reported no injuries or fatalities. Side note. We understand that one newspaper has the Freeman brothers on one side of the feud, and the other newspaper has them listed on the other side. We tend to believe that the Freeman brothers stood with the Strong faction. This is because of the actions that this side takes after the Littles leave town. The Strong faction barricaded themselves into a little log cabin about 100 yards from the courthouse. The Strong faction had previously kept their arms in this cabin so that they were now well stocked with guns and ammo. The Eggman faction took refuge in the courthouse and shots and harsh words were exchanged throughout the day between the two parties. The next day it was discovered that the Eggman party had moved their faction from the courthouse to a place near the river bank while the Strong faction remained in their quarters. The Strongs drunkenly went out into the streets, well armed, and began to parade around in defiance of the law and order of the town. Whispers went around town that Jason Little, who was charged with the murder of his wife, would soon be released from the custody of the sheriff in Lexington, Kentucky. J.C.B. Allen, who was a justice of the peace and supported by the Littles and the Crawfords, who numbered about 40 persons, began appearing and loitering in the streets awaiting the arrival of Little. Judge Randall appointed County Judge John W. Burnett and the Deputy Sheriff, along with 15 men, to squash the aims of the mob. About 3 p.m. they returned with Jason Little and placed him in the jail with a guard of 25 men. As long as the men were guarding Little, no attempt was made upon the jail. After a while, the guards began to disperse the crowds, and the Littles and Crawfords thought that it was a good time to attempt a jailbreak. They attacked Judge Burnett and threatened to take his life. The situation quickly escalated as threats and loud voices began to carry in the streets. Gunshots soon rang through the air toward the guards. This took them by surprise and they quickly dispersed to seek shelter from the volley. Judge Burnett was shot through the heart and instantly killed by this action. The shots and threats rang out constantly over the entire evening. Aikman and his men were back at the courthouse yard and sought shelter behind the clerk's office and the courtroom. The guards retreated up the street to where the strong faction was located. Each side had 30 to 40 men at this point in the battle and were well armed with the latest Colt Navy repeaters, Spencers, and Ballard rifles. Each man was a great shot and able to kill a man from 100 to 250 yards away. Aikman's faction took access to attempt to open the jail door and rescue Jason Little. Tom Little of Compton, who was the brother, some say cousin, of Jason, tried to stop the riot but was shot through the body which killed him. According to the Little Falls transcript, quote, the prisoner told him from the window that they need not try to release him for he would give himself up to the jailer again, unquote. 
According to the summary of the Helena Weekly Herald's article, the Eggman party abandoned the courthouse and jail over the night, and the sheriff and his posse soon gained control over them again. A guard was detailed to bury Judge Burnett. However, his funeral was very brief, attended by women and children who quickly left the area after the burial. Many people were killed as there was still a lot of gunshots being fired. The strong faction was still in control of Jackson, but the guards still held the courthouse and the jail. No action about this was taken by Governor McCleary of the state of Kentucky at this time. No court was held, and the circuit court judge disappeared, leaving no orders as to what to do about Jason Little. The Little Falls transcript states, quote, Wednesday morning, Judge Randall, without waiting to adjourn court, jumped on a horse and took an unceremonious departure. Many claims remained unaudited, and the sudden adjournment would cause much suffering, as the people needed their money, unquote. The article continues, Quote, Bill Strong's party swear that they will be revenged for the death of Burnett and Freeman, while the little say that they will kill Strong and his whole posse if they can. Unquote. The fight continues through December. The Cincinnati Daily Star posted, quote, Specials to the Star, Mount Sterling, December 7th. There's life in Obrethet yet. Many threats are becoming made and several good citizens are being alarmed and leaving their homes, and Jackson merchants are removing their goods. Judge Neil Strong with 70 men is encamped on Raleigh Creek. Bill Strong is on Middle Fork with about 20 men, and John Aikman is about 25 men on North Fork, unquote. We could not find any articles as to how this ended or if there was a shootout concerning all of this. However, we will keep an eye on this, to see if any future articles will become digitized so that we can update this section of the feud. Judge James Hargis speaks of the feud. Because there are two Kirk Jets in the Bloody Breathitt County feuds, it is important to make a distinction between the two men. Kirk Jett Sr. was the grandfather to Kirk Jett, who was in prison for the killing of Jim Markham, who was Judge Hargis' nephew. It is Kurt Jett Sr. that this story is about. Hiram Jett was Kurt Sr.'s son and the younger Kurt's father. According to the Pacific Commercial Advisor, Judge James Hargis would relate the tale of the Jett Little feud. This is a summary of the interview that he had in the article. One day in 1879, Jerry Little came to Jackson and walked down the street. Kirk Jett Sr. shot Little in the arm from the elbow to the wrist. Drawing his pistol, Little turned around and was shot again through the back. Little ran to a stump that is now the location of Hargis' store. He was dying when Hiram Jett ran up and shot him in the face and shoulders. Thinking that Little was dead, Hiram shot into the air. While distracted, Little took a handkerchief out of his pocket, wiped the blood out of his eyes, aimed his gun, and shot Hiram in the thigh, breaking it. Little was able to run to the Kentucky River with Curtis Jett Sr. in hot pursuit, shooting him at every step of the way. Little jumped into the river and swam across to safety. He laid on the riverbank for several hours before he was discovered by one of his own kinsmen. There had been many shots fired between Little and Jett that day, and when counted, Little had 27 bullet wounds. But this would not be the only time Little would have to recover from so many shots. Again, according to Judge Hargis, a few years later, during the Jet Cockrell Little feud, Little was shot 27 more times during an ambush. Again, he recovered from his wounds and went on his way. In 1889, Little was logging on a mountain in Breathitt County when a tree log rolled over him and killed him instantly. This death would seem to end the feud between the Little and Jet factions, but it did not. The hatred between the Jet Cockrell Little factions had not stopped and would carry on through the Hargis Cockrell feud. Thank you. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian feuds. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell notifications.
We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.